Hello and welcome. My name is Barkhadat. You're with the Mojo Story, the platform that has been reporting on the COVID crisis since 2020. I literally do not know an Indian any longer who has not been hit by the second wave. Many of you who are regular viewers in our audience know about my own personal tragedy, that of losing my father to COVID. But my Twitter timeline is an indication that I am not alone in this time of hardship, in this time of mourning, in this time of loss. And at least people of my class still have a voice, still have access to each other, still have access to friends, still have access to doctors, still have access to resources. There are many people from India's lower income groups who do not even have anyone to talk to them as hos at hospital gates. Hospital gates that have shut their doors to them, not because it's the hospital's fault, but because they simply do not have doctors or they do not have oxygen or they do not have nursing staff. And in the middle of all of this, this crisis that is unfolding in our country and in particularly peaking in the national capital, we have the grotesque immorality of the IPL. I rarely declare a position, an editorial position on a show. I'm still an old fashioned journalist. But in this particular case, from the very beginning, I have had serious ethical issues with the IPL carrying on in a parallel universe, not even acknowledging the gravity of what is unfolding. We have finally seen the Rajasthan Royals that had a match today make a big donation to the cause of COVID relief. But if the IPL must go on, should it not be converted into at least a fundraiser for what's happening in our country with the COVID carnage? Some of the pictures that I'm going to play on this program are going to be disturbing to you, but I'm going to play them for a reason. It is easy to look away from these pictures. It is easy to listen to those on Twitter, the trolls who do not want us to be telling stories of cremation grounds and burial grounds and hospitals and, and want us to leave the dead alone or the grieving alone in their misery. Well, let me tell you, the one thing that is making Indians miserable is that there is hardly anyone to chronicle their story. Every family that I have ever met in this reporting journey has wanted their story told. For instance, in a moment from now, I will bring you the devastated pictures of the family of Hardev Singh, who died just this morning from COVID. You'll want to look away, but don't. Take a look at what's happening while the IPL goes on. <laughs> Now, what is really tragic is that with no one to talk to them, with the state being absent at the gates of hospitals, Families that are desperate and grief-stricken tend to turn their anger to hospitals, to doctors. This isn't fair. I want to clarify that. But they don't know where else to channel it because they're often poor. They've often borrowed money just to get, pay the 5,000 rupees to the ambulance driver to ferry them to a hospital where the doors are sometimes shut to them, where they're told oxygen may have, ventilator may have. I also want to share with you that most people to get admission in a hospital, hospital today have to sign a consent form saying it's not the liability of the hospital if an absence of oxygen or a ventilator claims a life. I call it a modern day death warrant. In my life, I never thought I would see the scenes that I'm now going to play out for you. This is an oxygen langar that is taking place at a Gurdwara one hour, less than one hour from the capital. And when we were there to report, we saw people desperate, desperate. Dr. Saab, Dr. Saab, oximeter de do, oximeter de do, forget oxygen. People are so panic stricken now, they're not even necessarily enough oximeters to go around. Oximeter! 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 Oxime
A fuller report on that on Mojo Story later in the program. But given what's happening, is it okay with us that we have bio bubbles for the IPL players, that we have ICU ambulances on standby, that we are spending money and resources, all of it, each penny of which should be channeled into looking after this COVID crisis at this moment? How is how is this any different from the Central Vista project going on? Yes, it's not egregious like the election rallies. It's not causing a, a physical spread of the virus. There are those who have argued that it is it offers a safety valve, a kind of a kind of release for a country that's already depressed. But does that make sense without even an acknowledgement by these teams, by the tournament of the crisis that India is in? Let me introduce our guests on the program today, one by one, we have one of India's uh, best known uh, cricket commentators. There she is. I don't know how she went to the bottom. There's Sharda Ugra. Sharda, welcome to the program. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Ritesh Malik with us. Dr. Ritesh has been struggling to get enough oxygen for his hospital, also at the front line of the COVID battle. Uh, welcome, Ritesh. Vivan Marwa, author, is with us. Vivan and I disagreed on the continuing of the IPL. He, he thought it helped. The mental health of Indians is a collective right now, and I want to understand a little bit more about, about that from him. And we have RJ Stuti with us, whose own father is currently critically ill, and my heart in particular goes out to her having just lost my own dad uh, to COVID. I kind of know, Stuti, if anybody does, uh, what you're going through, and I'm just wondering what the spectacle of that IPL uh, makes you feel like at this moment. But Sharda, I want to start uh, with you. We've finally seen some of the pressure having an impact. We're at least seeing teams stepping up and doing what Pat Cummins started to do, which is to put their money where their mouth is. Does that make it better? Does that take away the ethical questions for you? Barka, are you asking me? Sorry, I think the, the voice just yes. dropped a bit. Yes, yes, uh, I'm asking it doesn't you. Take yes. Away, yeah. yeah, Barka, it doesn't take away the ethical question of how you're going to respond to this. Uh, you know, for the first time, uh, uh, it's become into a thing of, you know, are you an IPL hater or do you want the IPL to continue? It's like there are no two other ways to go about it. Uh, I think what has happened in this case is that the teams almost have been shamed into, I, I mean, I'm saying shame, they'll not admit, they'll not say that they were shamed into doing something. Um, and at this point, you know, I, what is still sort of fairly deafening is the absence of any institutional word from the BCCI uh, from the from the uh, you know from the uh, uh, the organize the establishment the Indian cricket establishment to say that look we are in the middle of this terrible uh, uh, nightmare that is going on we began this IPL we did not expect it to be this way I mean I don't know why I am doing my P their PR explanation for them but there is nothing that is just responding to the massive grief that is happening there and i think uh, the more you watch it i started watching it and I, I struggle to watch it now because the absence of that acknowledgement of of the loss of life and like i said a, a couple of days ago that 10 years from now teenagers are going to ask us what were you guys thinking you know that you had these thousands of deaths taking place at of a scale that is that the country may have uh, uh, experienced, say, in, 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 since in independence. And what was your response to it? You know, these yeah. walls of spectators looking happy and cheering. And There are ways to uh, acknowledge what is happening around. I mean, I have a reason as to why they didn't do this, but that, that is for later. Um, but it, it's this, this whole issue. And moving it to Delhi at a time, uh, you know, everyone pointed out all journalists particularly pointed out that look you are away from Loknayak hospital which is a covid hospital you are three and a half kilometers away from nigambodh ghat you are that close to life and death in delhi and you are saying it's cricket and it, it's fine i mean i'm not saying cancel it i'm saying just show us that you care for your fans that are out there for the viewers that you are reaching out to them in some way and saying we feel your loss you know, we, we feel your loss. We want we want to somehow reach out to you. But there is no reaching out. I mean, uh, 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 a sport is supposed to be something else. But this is just, you know, are you a community? Are you a cricket community of the players, the officials, the umpires and the fans? Or are you just a factory? 
that uh, produces and uh, has you know yeah. gets ad revenue and does what are you a community are you showing us that you belong to a community or that you don't give a shit about the community at all you don't care you know so 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 more than the game carrying on it is that it does not even acknowledge the crisis that is taking place institutionally individual players or individual teams may be making a contribution uh, and sharda there is also the moral question of resources just like i have you know a, a problem with resources being spent on the central vista i have a problem with ambulances being on standby for players uh, when ambulances are not available to carry either the living or the dead in my city right now in my country right now i have a huge ethical problem with I'm not sure Sharda can hear me, so let me take that to Ritesh. Ritesh, as a doctor who's struggling for oxygen, I'm sure you're a cricket lover like most people in this country are. Does the cricket give you release, or does it make you sick in the stomach that it's still carrying on? It's it's appalling, ma'am. It's 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 it's. Too, too, what are you talking about? How how can cricket give you relief at this point in time when we are losing? There is not even a single family that I know. who is not affected by covid crisis pan india how can we how and, and and this is not even good as a doctor i can tell you this is not even good for the cricketers without mask they are going out there talking to each other or how how can how, how can how can this happen in a country like ours i not only cricket in my opinion everything we should have a national agenda right now any and everything that is happening in our nation should be only and only focused upon one thing and that is controlling the 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 co- the number of active covid cases or vaccinating individuals the way we are going right now oh i'll i'll tell you yes i don't know whether you know this or not yesterday night at 1 am at badarpur and bawana oxygen cylinder or uh, uh, refilling stations a team of five people from from my hospital were beaten up by a various people out of which we know a couple of people were from the police there is massive hoarding of oxygen even as we speak right now we do not have oxygen as much as pr or the, the government and wants to do about the fact that we have got oxygen from bangkok from different parts of the uh, of, of the world today you tell me do you Uh, you you you've been a part of so many e hospitals right now as a hospital owner i can tell you the grief what is happening is in east delhi there are only two or three hospitals that still have oxygen left all other hospitals have told if you want to get your patient admitted get your own hospital Na- uh, yeah, get, yeah, get your own oxygen get your own oxygen Na- who is telling you this one minute one minute this is a very important point uh, uh, and the pictures you're seeing are of a, of an oxygen langar the images i thought i'd never see in my life as i said uh, ritesh uh, when when someone like you struggles and i know that previously you've told me that you had to cry beg plead with vendors for oxygen and then you see in a parallel universe the bio bubble uh, of the ipl how does that actually uh, make you feel honestly before this i didn't know ipl was going on because when we spoke uh, i when i spoke to ashish he said that at actually ipl is going on i was amazed i didn't know that that at that, that we are in a country which is so apathetic towards the misery of so many people who are losing their lives young young you i i, I don't know how to put this but uh, do you know what happens when and and i i i can be so empathetic about out the fact that you've lost your father but just imagine about a father who's 90 years old who's just lost a son there is nothing more sad than and and when someone loses his or her life before or his or her time comes this is at this point in time there should be only one agenda either or either control the number of cases even now i'm, I'm sorry to, to to say this but even now i think two or three days back there was a virtual rally in west bengal ma'am i can guarantee you west bengal will become the largest epicenter virtual. of COVID. virtual rally virtual nahi tha wo virtual to abhi kiya gaye there was a physical rally there was a physical rally in the south of india two days ago forget virtual but uh-huh. ipl would argue ritesh one minute our ipl would argue that we are in a bio, bio bubble even in other parts of the world and i want sharda to come in on, on this as well and then i'll go to vivan that even in the us the height of covid the games went on sport went on i've heard this from a lot of my friends also but i just believe that they were not at that level of humanitarian crisis 
that we are at. Yes, they were seeing a high spike in deaths, but also sport in the United States of America in particular is deeply political. We have seen basketball players, for example, embrace the Black Lives uh, Matter movement fully. Uh, I think that people would have reacted very, very differently to the IPL had the players used their power and their clout to make these games about COVID. I think it would have gone down completely differently. Just like when, when, when the basketball players or, you know, the NBA in, in the US made it about George Floyd. Ritesh and Sharda, both on that. Ritesh, to you first. I, 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 even, even if it was, was on in the US, yes, I don't think that we should be doing it. That I, I have a very, very strong opinion about, about it. it and, and this might be because I'm more closer to what I'm seeing around um, in the city. And, and I think uh, people people are not, not seeing what I'm seeing. So I, my, my views might be extremely biased. But, but if, you, if you see from my vantage point, and you, you'll actually start crying. Uh, I, I have the same vantage point, not just as someone who's, who's lost her dad, but also as someone who, who's been reporting this devastation for now a year and a half from the ground. Sharda, to those who say that the world also carried on with sport, that Tokyo is also looking at, you know, the Olympics. I mean, I'm just giving you the counter arguments. I think this is grotesque. Vivan knows what I think. It doesn't mean I shout his view down. But there are those who will say this. They will point to other parts of the world where a collective pressure cooker release, I think that would be the argument, has been provided by sport. You would say what? Sharda? I think Sharda is just not able to hear me. Sharda, are you able to hear me? So let me let me bring in Vivan. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with the line with Sharda. Vivan, take up take up the point and tell me if you're still feeling like you want to watch you want to watch and you still think the game should carry on. Um, thanks for having me on, Barkhan. I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. I didn't know him personally, but I felt like I know, knew him so well. Um, and one of the things about COVID has been just the tragedy all around us. Right? There's, there's people my age who are dying. There's people three times my age who are dying. And sometimes a new cycle can just get very overwhelming. We're seeing so much of bad news. And a lot of us are just sitting at homes. And I still do believe that the IPL is... Uh, an opportunity for people to take three, three and a half hours out of their day. It's not like they're going out and those people are attending rallies or they're spreading COVID, but they're just spending three, three and a half hours thinking about something else, which I think from a mental health point of view is is what's really necessary right now, given, again, the bad news that we're surrounded with the other 21, 22 hours of the day. My thoughts are, you know, if we can have election rallies, political rallies, religious festivals, weddings, why can't we have the IPL, which provides entertainment to millions and is much more secure than any of those activities? Now, e e even if they are hogging medical resources, and I know they are, but at what scale, a couple hundred a day, um, you know, they're taking, you know, resources, they've built their own infrastructure, they've built their own, um, you know, uh, supply chains for these resources. And I'm in no way justifying, uh, you know, taking away necessary medical resources at this time but i don't think it's at the scale as you've acknowledged yourself of election rallies but my thoughts on the ipl are, are this that many things can be true that the ipl should be doing more and i feel across the board india's elites should be doing more our political elites should be doing more bollywood elites should be doing more and sporting elites should be doing more and we've seen time and again where these elites have just kept quiet at times of national reckoning and they've and they're keeping quiet right now as well and this is a problem we've had you know since maybe this government came to power where um where either people are not speaking up out of out of will or out of fear so you know across the board the silence has been deafening and and another thing can also be true that the ipl should also take place because it gives millions this chance to just think about something else for a couple hours a day so I'm not saying that one should take precedence over the other, but I believe that this question has a lot more nuance than is being presented right now, because it's not partic a particularly high risk activity. We're not condoning high risk behavior. We're just giving people a chance to think about something else. So, so let me ask you, of course, these are all the players that have been pulling out and Ashwin's the only one who's actually acknowledged that it's something to do with COVID. The others are just quietly uh, probably wriggling their way out while they can. Vivan, uh, is it your case that you feel that the IPL is being singled out and it's not egregious in the same way because it's not an activity that actually spreads 
COVID. So it's not COVID irresponsible behavior in the way that let's say a religious congregation, an election rally, or even a wedding, which as you pointed out, is still being allowed is. Yeah, that is my case that, you know, we're not, uh, again, we're not telling people to go out and attend the IPL. They cannot attend the IPL. In fact, if if the IPL wants to tighten screws, it can tell the owners to not attend the games because in many cases, you're seeing management staff attend the games without their masks on. Um, so I don't think that the IPL is really promoting a vice. I mean, well, uh, yeah, it's not promoting a vice right now. It's just giving people that opportunity to, you know, tune off for a couple of hours. So I do think it is getting a little bit of, of undue hate, but I also think that the IPL should be doing much more. Like, you know, today's game, the, the donation that was announced, why wasn't this done weeks earlier? Why was the first player who made a donation an Australian? Why weren't Indian players doing that? You know, it's not like they're not making, you know, big fat paychecks. Uh, I think a lot of this comes from within where we've just stopped holding our elites responsible. Um, and we don't, uh, and the elites themselves don't take themselves uh, seriously anymore. Um, I think the, my main issue is with, uh, with individual cricketers, is with the BCCI. Why are Saurav Ganguly and Jay Shah not... Uh, holding fundraisers? Why are they not, you know, donating some of the mammoth pro uh, profits they make towards food banks and to get oxygen out there and testing and ambulances? You know, like you mentioned, people are dying at hospital gates. Why is the BCCI, which is one of the world's most uh, uh, profitable and cash rich sporting um, bodies, not doing more? So I have, I take issue with these individuals and organizations and not with the event because I think the uh, benefits outweigh the costs. Okay. Uh, Stuti, uh, if I can bring you in, and I know this is a hard time. It's a hard time for us all. I know your father is, 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 is critically ill, and I really hope he has better luck than, than mine did. Uh, as, as, as a daughter who's just, you know, you can't do anything in COVID. It's an isolation illness. You can't even be by his side. Uh, when you hear the argument that the IPL offers a release, that the IPL offers a distraction. Yes, that those who manage the IPL, I think that's the point that Vivan is making. He's drawing a distinction between those who run the IPL and those who participate in it and watch it. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel? Do you feel that this just reinforces the callousness that surrounds us, that has brought us to this point? Or do you, do you feel that there's some merit in the argument that Vivan is making? To be very, very honest with you, Barkha, when, when I hear the term IPL and I hear that matches are happening, I don't know in which parallel universe that is happening because I don't have the luxury to follow it. Uh, for the past nine days, I wake up with my phone, I sleep with my phone, I'm all the time with my phone because for everything that I need to take care of my father, I need to make 20 calls for it. So I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know who these people are who are playing, who are the ones who are watching and who are the ones who are looking for entertainment because uh, it's not just my own personal crisis that I'm going through. And every time I talk about it, uh, I also feel very, very guilty because I'm also amplifying voices of, of help, uh, please, of, of people who are in a worst position than me. And I'm acutely aware of it, it pains. And everyone that I know, Everyone that I know, whether in office, in my friend circle, otherwise on social media, is suffering, has knows someone who is in need today and is scrambling to somehow help them from medicines, injections, hospital beds, ventilators, uh, oxygen concentrators, ambulances. So I honestly, for once, I, I don't know. I don't know where IPL is being played because I, I, I'm only seeing SOS messages, only seeing SOS tweets, but, but hearing, you know, both sides, hearing both sides of the argument, don't we realize, because there is no compassion. Today, what is missing is compassion from our leaders. There, there is no softness. There is no one saying sorry. There's no one who's even acknowledging that there's a problem. What we yeah. see, what we hear instead are, are, are strange words like there is oxygen are strange words like things are in control and it it i get angry because i have experienced it firsthand so at a time like this 
when there is such discrepancy between what an average citizen is going through and what we hear from our netas i don't know who are these people who want this entertainment and i also cannot believe that a body like bcci needs people to nudge it so so as to turn it into a fundraiser i don't know i i don't know these people i i don't watch this match i don't have the luxury because every minute i'm either scrambling for stuff for myself or i'm trying to find it for someone else so i i yeah. don't know in what parallel universe this this yeah. this thing is being yeah. played out you know we just saw photos of your dad and and i hope he gets better real soon and i'm going to play uh some of mine just just because uh i feel like and and he's gone and i just want to see his smiling face again but as i look at these pictures what i keep thinking is vivan that i look at the photos of my dad i look at the photos of stuti's dad and i think that anyone who's actually battling with a crisis in their family is going to feel differently about the ipl than someone who's not any doctor frontline worker victim survivor someone who's lost a loved one i don't know i don't know that they're looking for distraction it seems to me that the people looking for distraction are those who can't uh, bear the the bad news on their twitter timeline and you know i, I and with respect do you, do you do you feel like it's a little bit of a self indulgence to be talking about the mental health needs right now of 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 those who are just looking on as opposed to the ones who are actually living this desperately looking for ambulances and and oxygen vivan you know uh, again barkha you know these these photos are emotional um, are really moving and uh, you also shared a video of him with a clock and one of your granddaughters and and it was really moving and you know there's just nothing that um, you know kind of that that tragedy that people are experiencing right now that thousands of families are experiencing right now nothing uh, you know can make that any better um and so there's not you know a whole lot i can that you know that can argue with that but my my view is that we indians have been left on our own our prime minister basically told us well you're on your own do what you can and it's up upon us to protect our physical health as well as our mental health now our physical health is deeply compromised people who are isolate who've been isolating for weeks are getting covid we don't know you know how infectious this double or triple mutant strain is but we can take care of ourselves to whatever extent and i think mental health is one of those things in indian society we just don't talk of enough and i know that there's a lot of people my age i mean many of them have covid as well and they're just you know in bed you know 24 hours they're not moving and and they're just sort of with these dark thoughts um and, and and you know what do you do and how do you occupy yourself and i i think you know two things can be true again that the scale of tragedy is just something else and there's nothing we can say that would make this any better for those who are losing loved ones but also mm-hmm. for the people you know for the 1 billion people uh, or the 100 million people who watch ipl i think it's one of those really important things that you know if we're all staying at home that allows us to think about something else because i really think we need yeah. to be talking more about mental health right now um it's something we've never really discussed openly in indian society and it, it right now it matters uh, uh almost as much as physical see, health okay i can see lots of reactions to that but i want to start with sharda then stuti and then ritesh uh, sharda before we lose your line again you yeah. spoke earlier about how you believe it's the fault of those who manage and run the bcci right what could they have done differently like there is ritesh and stuti and me who live in a covid bubble and not in the ipl's bio bubble so we don't know the world outside of it but vivan makes a sincere point that sport is a balm just like something else could be like music could be or reading a book could be it's just that there is something so large and collective happening here that seems so about big money and glamour and you know the hashtags about who's winning and not that it's it's alien to to me but maybe not everybody perceives it the same way chat it's it's like uh, 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 you know stuti said it's like uh, ritesh said like you have said uh, i we we are trying to and i mean i completely 
uh, uh, empathize with what Vivan is saying about mental health and so on. But when I hear uh, Ritesh's argument about medicine and doctors, I said, you know, in terms of priorities, I just put my hands up and say, yeah, you're right. You, it, it's what you're saying is right, because lives are more important than anything else. And at the moment, life in India seems to be uh, extremely uh, cheap. Uh, and the, uh, uh, let me just bring in here the reason why there is such silence. We were trying to wonder why is it happening? Why yeah. is it happening? It's not that the players or the officials or the uh, the umpires and scorers and everybody around is not affected by this. What the moment you start saying that this is happening and this is a problem and let us reach out and help people, the fear then you are accepting that there is something very bad going on outside in the world. The moment your superstars start accepting there is something very bad going on outside their little their bubble, then it means that something in the country is not right. Why is it not right? Because well, the government uh, didn't uh, the IPL managing uh, authority, whoever it is, IPL governing council, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, they did not look at this carefully enough to see what was coming. What was coming? X, Y, Z was coming, but the the government didn't see it. So in many ways, I look at what's happening inside cricket and this sort of tone deafness and this little bubble that is there as a reflection of what's happening in the larger country itself, like a complete uh, uh, the lack of empathy, as Tuti said, lack of compassion, just words about nothing's happening and our, our death count is low. I mean, two lakh people have died. Two yeah. lakh Indians have died. And I keep saying there must be cricket fans amongst them that have died. And no, let me I'm, and let and, and let me tell you, having been to all the crematoriums and graveyards, many more than two lakh. I don't know how many more, but the gap between the official data and the and, and the bodies we're counting at crematoriums is gigantic. These yeah. these 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 numbers are the are the biggest numbers that you will find in modern Indian history anywhere. Yeah. And to say that things. Obviously, something is very wrong outside. Obviously, something has gone it turned into like a Holocaust kind of a uh, experience that we are having. I mean, a very senior, I've said this again, a very senior uh, a member of the Indian women's cricket team lost her mother due to COVID. Right. But there's nothing about it. Two young uh, father and son, uh, midday newspaper published a story of father and son uh, club and junior cricketers uh, from Bombay. They died during COVID. So uh, what I'm saying is that there is no identification of a community inside cricket. There is no identification of a community of Indian citizens that are suffering outside of cricket. So this is what we are seeing, you know. Uh, it is it is uh, whatever the IPL does. I'm saying, do you have a community? You want to ask everyone that is there, cricket people particularly, do you have a community or you just have a factory that generates money? You know, same yeah. with outside the rest of the country. You want to ask your politicians, you want to ask your leaders, do you have a community of citizens around you or do you just have votes? And because dead people don't give votes, you don't give a shit, you don't care. Or at least show us that you care. Give us some sign. You know, that is what has happened. And this sort of complete lack of acknowledgement. I mean, it, I, I'm not saying for one moment that people inside the IPL bubble don't feel pain. Let me just tell you one thing very quickly, uh, uh, Barka. Yeah. Uh, last year uh, in Uganda, there's a Uganda Cricket Association whose annual budget is $1.1 million. Last year, when COVID hit the Ugandan Cricket Association, from March to November, they paid out they, they supported 1,500 people. They didn't want them to struggle. They didn't want them to suffer. They went out and said, we're going to pay our uh, volunteers. They're going to pay our cricket teachers. This is Uganda cricket. Estonia has donated money for the... Uh, uh, Estonia cricket has donated money for the COVID uh, crisis. So you know that there is a cricket community out there. Just respond in a way, for God's sake. Just say that we are sorry but, about what's happening. Our hearts yeah. are breaking. But you've got yeah. people doing silly ads and, you know, there are, there are, you, know, you ask me, what are the ways to do it? You know, that wall that they have where they show people smiling and laughing and whatever. Put up pictures of doctors. Put up pictures of the people that have passed. Have a moment silence. Give them a little bit of a clap of the of doctors, uh, uh, you know, people that are working in hospitals, people that are uh, transporting, yeah. uh, driving ambulances. Give them some, give them, look and tell them that, like, listen, we hear you. We feel your pain. Just do that. It's yeah. not a difficult thing to do. You know, have two minutes silence before. Wear a black band. Do something. Even if it's you'll say it's symbolic, doesn't mean anything. Not everything is about money. Something yeah. is also about you know uh, giving out a hand of in support. I'm looking at these pictures here, and I'm saying like, where are you? Yeah, where are you guys? Why are you not speaking to Indians? You know, why are you not speaking to all these? This is the largest. Uh, a cricket fan, you know, gathering in the in the world, and you're not seeing anything to them. This is yeah. it's just terrible. 
Ritesh as a doctor, sorry, Suthi, I'll come to you right after Ritesh. Ritesh is a doctor at the front line. How does it make you, how does it, how do you feel today? Do you feel like everybody says doctors are our heroes, but how do you actually feel, uh, you know, whether it's with the IPL or everything else that's going on? I think first of all, yeah, if, if you want to talk about heroes, I think heroes are those people who take the dead at bodies away from hospitals to the crematoriums. Uh, these are heavily underpaid people who are mostly uh, from, from from extremely lower or castes. And, and in my opinion, these are the people who really deserve of an applaud. Most of the times, these people are not wearing PP kits. They are just wearing a mask. And, and, and for doctors, we are, we are still very fortunate that we have a lot of uh, armor around us to save us from um, the virus. Apart from that, I, I would also like to mention one thing here. In Kargil war, we lost 527 soldiers. Now, uh, post that, we had so many events which denoted that we have lost so many people on a daily basis. This is just the, the, these numbers are absolutely baseless. I can guarantee these numbers are baseless. They are completely, completely wrongly uh, given to us. And we as a country, I so agree with Sharda, ma'am, such a beautiful point she has come out with that, that, that actually we want to show that everything is going well. Everything is hunky-dory in the country. And this is also symbolic from the fact that the United Nations came to our support and our government said that, that no, everything is good and we are living in a completely, completely different bubble. And, and this needs to, and, and this is also, Barkha ma'am, I would like to tell you a very interesting thing. While we were doing some, some study about the internet and, and what do people care about in India, there were four things. Politics, religion, uh, Bollywood and cricket. These four things revolve around all, uh, almost 96% of the uh, uh, non-intellectual population of the world that, that of, of India that we talk about. Now, these four people are largely responsible for what happened. If you talk about re religion, Kumbh Mela should not have been ha happening. The only reason that tier two cities will now get a massive spike is because of Kumbh Mela. If you talk about politics, all the elections, Election Commission of India should have banned all the elections this is this is mass genocide how can you how can you conduct election in these times and even now begging and urging people that enjoy your right of democracy and enjoy the franchise that you that has been handed over to you is completely baseless and in in all of that uh, when you talk about in, in my opinion bollywood can be more sensitive these are influencers even i look up to a sharukh khan on a daily basis can we have more people like priyanka chopra her yesterday's message was extremely empathizing my only request to everyone is is that these are times where we need our influencers as influencers we don't have i don't have any following i have hardly 17000 people following me on twitter but just imagine if that message the the, the documents that i have made can be e uh, amplified through ooh, the influencer networks of this country. Just imagine how much impact it can create. And that is why IPL is the last of our worries. Honestly, IPL is something that at, at it happens. It, 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 I'm just worried about, about, about the cricketers. In, 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 in fact, I don't care whether IPL is happening or not, or as long as it does not or, or, uh, remove the resources. If you talk about ambulances, ma'am, this is so oh, disheartening. GST on an ambulance for hospitals is 28%. How can you have a have twenty eight percent GST on a, an ambulance today when we have so little uh, infrastructure and especially in a resource stricken country like India? So, so my only submission is that let's let's all all uh, empathize with those with the families of those almost five to six thousand people who are losing lives on a daily basis. When you talk about the GST on ambulances for hospitals, Ritesh, I'm just struck by the fact that the players have ambulances on standby. And I know, Vivan, you said it's not too many. But, you know, when you report, as I do, the scrum for an ambulance every day, what it means, not even one life can should be lost because an ambulance was on standby for an IPL match. Ritesh, you wanted to say something there? 
ma'am too many you cannot even imagine when when i i have a very dear friend of mine he needed an ambulance just one ambulance with one oxygen cylinder only a 6 liter oxygen cylinder and he begged me he was in his tears he's a 31 year old boy and he had his his grandmother on 75 spo2 and for the past 72 hours he's not getting a bed he's not getting an ambulance how the hell can we say that it's not too many i'm sorry vivan and i i i, I respect your thoughts but it's not about you cannot even have a single ambulance in fact we should be converting government and vehicles into ambulances this is yeah. this is one time we should stop everything as a country we should stop everything we should hold our government accountable and also ourselves accountable and 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 convert everything into a covid facility be it offices be be it, it and vaccine ma'am i'm i i'm i'm, I'm sorry I'm, i'm deranging from the topic even in today we don't have any idea as a private hospital how are we going to get vaccines we are we are continuously trying to understand how will we get vaccines we now have 42 Two crore more people who need to be vaccinated, but at, as private facilities, we have no idea. We, we are we are still trying to understand, and there, there's no clear guidance. And and everybody from the authority is saying that that don't worry, everything will be fine. Yeah, Stuti, you wanted to respond to Vivan's point about how it aids uh, mental health, and mental health is this subject in the closet, and you know we need to acknowledge that it is uh, leaving scars on 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 a collective as well. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was listening to Vivan and Vivan. Uh, nothing, nothing personal. I I respect your views, but I was just wondering, what about the mental health of all of us? All of us yeah. who are caregivers, who are suffering, who are seeing our loved ones suffer. When you see somebody you love gasping for breath, what happens to our mental health? I'm a radio jockey. I started hosting. I, yesterday was my first show after the after the break, and I know what it means to uh, when we say life goes on. for us it is about playing the next song and yet as an entertainment channel we're talking about plasma donations we're talking about uh, vaccinations we 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 are taking sos pleas of people you cannot divorce yourself from the reality which is sadly what the administration is doing today wants us to believe and and what our celebrities are doing we have so many celebrities with huge followings but sadly not one spine i mean i i have been amplifying these messages and hats off to people uh, so many young leaders of political parties and people like uh, bhumi padnekar sonu sood who are amplifying these messages who are third not holidaying they can afford those holidays not pretending like uh, they need to be in a spa for their mental health what are we talking about we are and and probably because my mental health is in pits i am a little more sensitive so some of, you know generally i'm i'm used to trolling but some of the comments uh, under the videos where i've been talking about my story my ordeal they sting when they say oh why is she talking about it uh, oh she she thinks she's great she'll never have a problem no the reason i'm talking is because i am aware that i actually Uh, have been cushioned the the class that i belong to with my contacts my education uh, uh, my finances that i have never faced this reality and yet i am going through it which is why i'm saying this story and i'm really, i i don't like it it's terrible for my mental health to constantly recount what happened that night when i took my father to the hospital and then after 4 hours had to get him back it was a tough decision as a family we weren't feeling great we weren't feeling brave we were scared we were getting our patient out of the hospital because we thought we'll be able to care for him better than if he's in the hospital it's not an easy decision and so i and 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 everyone and and this was a, a a very important point that uh, that sharda made that this is this is a statement we we all been about big statements since last year which is why we are here today oh we are going to send vaccines out oh we are fine we don't need help we can help other countries this is another message we are fine we can have a game of cricket yeah it's bizarre it's insensitive it's cruel that's what i want to say and my yeah. mental health is in pits yeah uh Vivan, I mean, we're not we're not guilting you here. I just think we're not understanding because we're maybe at least three of us on this are too close. One has an ill father. One has lost her father. Ritesh is a doctor at the front line. I'm sure Sharda has friends. I'm sure you have friends who've suffered. Uh, so, the just briefly, is your if the IPL was handling it differently, for example, like your own show is, 
if the ipl was this big moment and became about a you know a way to amplify messages of science of honor of mourning of grief uh, if it became in fact a space for community in the way that sport was once meant to be yes would you feel differently about it yes yes i want to use the use the word sukoon sukoon yeah. milega you will know that you're not alone in it you know when i tell people that if you can't do anything send a message to a person you know who's suffering and say are you okay do you need something not that i'm able to answer reply take those calls or even i i might come back to it after four days but it soothes it feels like there's somebody there's somebody there if and 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 i think uh, dr ritesh made this point that if that uh, politics religion uh, bollywood the, the and these are stars we look up to right every indian has a favorite actor a favorite cricketer we love them to have them to have them acknowledge our pain because they are also privileged to have them say please donate plasma i am recovered i am donating plasma please please go vaccinate yourself please double mask you think people will not follow right now why is it that people like has to constantly keep saying this is what we are going through imagine if i am going through what will happen to people who are in smaller towns people where people who don't have i have been tweeting messages of my security guard he's not on twitter he can't just take his phone out and and do an sos tweet so you know we are not able to reach those people but these people can and and if and this is this is the sensitivity that we want from every yeah. anyone who has influence from politicians leaders netas ministers actors or cricketers that they acknowledge right now they are not just in a bio bubble they're just in a strange bubble where thing not where they think that nothing will ever affect them and like and like somebody said here and it, it, it's it's so point that people who died so many of them are their fans their fans have died how can they not react to it how can they not put a tweet saying that i am pained because because people are dying these are people who've been cheering for me for my team for my country I mean, this is IPL, but they've also they won the India's jersey, right? What happened to that when when Indians are dying? How can you be in this bubble? This is not just a bio bubble. That's the problem. This is yeah. a, this is a bubble of privilege and a bubble where spying does not exist. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Sharda, who do we blame for this bubble of privilege? I mean, who do I we blame? Just, yeah, I'm just uh, uh, thinking that you know. the mistakes have happened at every step but i think fundamentally because there is uh, the fact that the ipl is this everyone says oh the ipl is an easy target no it's not an easy target you're throwing it in front of our face every day for uh, the final by the way is on may the 30th we have a whole month to go so they have wow. a whole month to address this or address this in some manner so i was yeah, talking yeah. to some experts and what can be done or how, how suppose you were somebody who had to sort out what they say first of all it's not a pr disaster it is a disaster that has happened the way in the way the ipl has gone about its business she said yeah. what can be done is just just stop play for a day reorganize your schedule stop play and say we are in morning just do that but my whole thing is that listen the moment you make one mistake because you don't want to admit that there is a there is a problem and you start with that that you do and so every single player and i i asked this question in a in a thing with bbc people i said suppose someone like rohit sharma put out a tweet and then he got dropped forever and he never played for india again the point is there will be so many people behind him saying good for you that you did this or virat kohli he would his his career would would be curtailed in terms of how, what he plays in india how he does in india but it would not be curtailed in his other opportunities elsewhere so you know every like you said sport is about community sport is also about finding heroes so the words we use a lot as sports journalists are character and courage and all of that has been lacking in in this particular point as sports journalists we always hammering this out oh the team showed character nobody in cricket you have a few people that are talking about it i mean the astonishing thing is that football franchises for example um that are there of isl they are putting out on their twitter uh, a timeline you've got non stop messages going from the people in football um there's a there's a one footballer who's sort of uh, donating blood one of them worked on the covid helplines at one point so they are there so why can it be not that the, how afraid are you of the consequences when you yeah. have so much privilege when you have so much money what are you afraid of and it is fear that is stopping them it is not 
I don't even, I think they're feeling awful, but it is fear that is stopping them. A fear of what the consequences are because, you know, the Home Minister's son is the BCCI secretary and he shouldn't get pissed off. You know, if we do this, I know you actually think you actually think it's 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 that, yeah, Sharda. You actually think that this is not an absence of uh, this is not an absence of empathy. It's an yeah. absence of courage. It's a, it's a presence, yes, and it's a presence of fear and intimidation. Now, let me just tell you one more thing. Say, for example, this is this is completely off topic. I'm apologizing to Dr. Ritesh and to Stuti and to uh, Vivan that uh, that uh, you know. Uh, say, for example, that the BCCI had been headed by a rival from the rival political party. If Sharad Pawar was BCCI president, do you think the IPL would have been allowed to go on? Not a chance in hell. So no basically, basically, whatever the political agenda is of whoever's managing it is what's manifesting for us as citizens in this calamitous yes. time. Yes. And that sucks <laughs> and stinks. My, it not just my, does it suck, it stinks. It, it, I could be completely wrong. But that is the only explanation that I'm that I'm finding. That is the yeah. only logical uh, conclusion that I can come to. I, yeah. I cannot understand why why there is this deafness. You know. Yeah, Vivan. I think uh, I'll give Ritesh the closing word, but to Vivan first. Uh, you know the point that that Ritesh made, Vivan, about all of our celebrities, the ones that Indians look up most to, have actually betrayed us the most. Our obsessions: politics, cricket, Bollywood. There has been a complete disenchantment with all three. That's actually what's playing out here. No, you know, that's exactly what I started off by saying is that our elites have, you know, consistently let us down. Uh, just to be personal, I actually don't watch Bollywood films anymore because I'm actually totally disgusted by how Bollywood celebrities have time and again let us down on very important issues when the public looks up to them. Uh, you know, Deepika Padukone, for example, she took a pretty brave stand when her film came out. She was, she went to JNU and she's the only one who did that. And we lauded her for it. People loved her for it because she's the only one who did it. I, in fact, would not be surprised in a few days if, you know, Bollywood looks at the Time magazine cover that just came out. If they look at some of the headlines we've been getting and they start a hashtag India sovereign, India against foreign media, you know, don't tarnish our reputation. I have very low expectations from Bollywood. And I don't think that these people are ever, are ever going to put profits above people and come out with a statement that has some spine. So and why think, are you kinder about the sports celebrities? Why because, are you feeling... Because I'm talking about I, it from the point of view I, as a fan. And I'm talking about it from the point of view as a person who loves the sport. Should I be penalized because the BJP is greedy? And, you know, like Sharda mentioned, the Home Minister's son uh, is basically calling the shots at BCCI. I mean, I don't like it at all. I, I don't think he's qualified to be in that role one bit. But uh, we are in an unprecedented crisis right now. You know, one solution could have been to play the tournament in Dubai like it, were, like it had been done last year, where critical medical resources are not being consumed or not being hoarded. But then I, I, I think some people might say, well, that's even more tone deaf that you've flown these people out of the country. So, I mean, there's no, I'm not a spokesperson of the IPL. I'm not a spokesperson of the BCCI. And I don't think there's any easy solution, but I'm just coming at it from the point of view as a fan where I, I still believe that this, you know, gives three, three and a half hours of, you know, respite every evening to people who really need it. And uh, I, I'm not discounting any of what Stuti said. You know, I, I think that yeah. uh, both you and her sharing your experiences has made people so much more aware of what's going on because you're really using your platforms to inform and using them in the best ways possible. I've never really, you know, had these assumptions from our elites um, for a long time because I think they're just going to let us down. And, you know, if we're talking about the hoarding of critical resources, just yesterday on Twitter, there was a video, which then actually I had tweeted it out, but then the person who had that original video deleted it, where there was, uh, you know, a family uh, in a tier two uh, city that had their oxygen cylinder literally snatched from them because yeah. a VIP needed it. Yeah. Um, uh, then, it then was denied. Video. It was denied. That video was denied. So we weren't very sure what happened. But yeah. yes, I, I know which video you're talking about. Yeah. And that's the point, right? It's galling to then think that there is oxygen or ICU exactly. ambulances on standby for the IPL players. Like it just doesn't 
sit right with me at all i don't know it just exactly it just doesn't if you just give me 30 seconds to complete yeah. you know people are dying outside aims they want to get a bed but chota rajan somehow just gets admission in there like how the hell did that happen you know he's a yeah. you know, one of the worst types of criminals around and so we consistently see you know double standards and we have to call those out but i think penalizing the 100 million people who are just you know looking to you know tune their minds off for for one eighth of the day is not required right now okay you're sticking to your position so i'm going to allow you one sentence and then dr ritesh can wrap this up for us yeah you know this 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 period also reveals character and and just as a sports fan i might not be a huge cricket fan but as a sports fan um, it is about building character young kids watch it so so you know you, you made a very sensible point about there being a presence of fear and you know more than absence of of empathy but but that is what builds character right it is dar ke aage jeet hai it is when you take a stand that's why there are heroes that's why kids have their posters up and and you know with exams postponed with 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 kids who are orphaned with their parents dying and uh, you, you know wouldn't they want to hear from their heroes how can we how can we just uh, you know explain this situation how, how can we be okay with it you know we all understand we understand what is happening we you know people can read between the lines we know the politics that is being played that is being yeah. that has been uh, played for a very long time but it is about standing up to that and and i hope yeah. and i'm glad that criticism is happening and i hope it reaches it reaches the actors the politicians the cricketers and they should know that people are not stupid people are watching everyone's watching you everyone's checking your timeline and when you do not speak when you're supposed to speak that reveals something about your character i agree ritesh last word to you ritesh ritesh uh, yeah uh, i truly feel that all the bollywood actors if you see in the past 5 years they have been meeting consistently with the top office in our country so i think they are more scared to actually uh, be out there in public and criticize the government and i feel that this is i i so agree with stuti right now this is the time to have a spine this is a, this is the time to actually be 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 for the country and and ensure that it, we hold accountable for people ma'am just imagine in 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 911 ha- i know that 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 amount of of loss of life was also huge but we are seeing a 911 happening every day in india just imagine the kind of of and, and and i'm just so furious right now i lost my chemistry teacher i lost uh, she she lost her husband two days before and her son called me up he he's, he's in btech first year and he said what are you saying matlab i'm 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 just i'm just uh, i'm i'm I, i might be too close to the reality but i'm not at all comfortable with anything which is happening around the country right now and i hope where the people who have lost their lives can, can these influencers start calling people who have lost their lives can they actually start doing zoom calls with 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 the with the kins of the deceased if if that can happen in india at least they can ensure a lot more sorrow or that than actually bring happiness for the all you know you're not you're not on the best line yeah. suddenly but i i got the essence of your message that 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 at least use your influence to make to be part of a community do 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 phone calls do zoom calls reach out to the families of those who died do fundraisers use your walls to honor the doctors at the front line uh, you know every day talk a little bit about one family behind the data behind the numbers there's so many ways of doing this to make people feel like they're not as i said earlier today in an interview to cnn i said i am orphaned now both my parents are gone uh, but what about the orphans of the indian state and i think for me every such thing that takes place in a parallel universe outside which does not reach out to a larger sense of community is to reinforce to the ordinary citizens of this country that they're simply orphaned by the indian state and now they're orphaned by the people that they have looked up to all of their lives whether poor or rich bollywood cricket 
This is the holy grail of India. If these are the people who are going to let Indians down and not give a shit right now, as Sharda said, what was the point of that compact, that relationship between the citizen and these celebrities? I think that's why the IPL is disturbing so many people. Thank you. Uh, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, hopefully, some of these voices of pain and anguish will be heard. Uh, Stuti, best wishes for your father. Vivan, thank you. Sharda, for never pulling your punches. And Ritesh, especially to you for doing all the work that you and others like yourself do at the front line. Thank you very much. And to our audience, see you tomorrow. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalists.